and just wait. Is Nick Fury going to show up? Nick Fury should show up in movies he was at that have nothing to do with Marvel. Yeah. Movies. That would be Absolutely. great. At the end of Inception, he shows up. That's a damn top. <laughs> Give me that. To get out. This is all a dream, motherfuckers. I'm fucking Nick Fury. This bullshit. You know, Superman shows up. He's got powers. It's easy for him. I feel like Batman's kind of guy. Like, come on, outside, no powers. Let's go outside, no powers. Clark, out there. Welcome to the show. I am that Chris Gore. This is Pod Crash. This is the show where you get to hear me each week as a guest on a different podcast. It gives you the opportunity to discover new shows, and it gives me a chance to talk about a variety of topics. This week, I am crashing a show called Comic Issues. Now, this show was actually recorded live at the San Diego, the very first, actually, San Diego Comic Fest, which was, it was actually, uh, this was put together by uh, some of the original founders of San Diego Comic Con. They wanted to get back to what, what Comic Con was really about which was, oddly enough, comic books. I mean, it, it's weird. I really feel like people who complain about Comic-Con, of which I am one of them, um, will we'll, we'll tell you that um, in, in the last like five years, it's, it's even just gotten crazy where it's, it's sort of lost its essence of what it was about. And, and I, I don't think that that's necessarily the, the organizer's fault. I feel that um, Comic-Con in San Diego is like Sundance in a way where it's a victim of its own success. It's become so successful, so popular that uh, it's, it's different. It's different than what it was, and it, 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 they can never go back. But San Diego Comic Fest was all about comics. The dealer's room, comics. There's some toys mixed in, but it's all pretty much comic books. And it was held at this resort hotel. It's one of, the, it's one of those hotels from the hotel circle. And this hotel, I'm not going to name what hotel it was, but I definitely, this hotel was like, I think it was fabulous in the 70s. This hotel really had like the decor, like this was swinging and hopping in the 70s. I, I, I definitely got that impression, but... But uh, this was recorded at a panel. Uh, it was a, a Saturday afternoon. And it was, first of all, it was a blast doing this because I showed up on, on like maybe just a few hours of sleep. So there's like one point during the show where, where I kind of like actually space out. And I think we're talking about one thing I'm actually talking about. And we're talking about a different thing. So my mind was sort of like behind the, but I caught up really quickly. Anyways, it was somewhat embarrassing. And then, and then the show kind of petered out at the end when we had a technical problem. But, but I'll cut it off before that. You don't need to listen to that. But, but uh, Comic Issues is, of course, about comics. And uh, it's hosted uh, by Anthony Silva uh, with help from uh, Andrew Plain and uh, Elizabeth Wallace. And they also have, they have, they have another guy that, that's on the show normally, too. They rotate people. They rotate people. But this show is all about comics. And I listen to like three episodes because I like to d listen to the shows before I'm actually on them. And this was booked way at the last minute. I knew I was doing a panel there and I wanted to actually crash a podcast. I just, at the very last minute, literally a day before I'm driving down there, um, um, producer Sean Merrick found this podcast and thought oh, it's perfect. It's, it's, this will be great. And I listened to like three episodes on the way. I took the long way down to San Diego just so I could listen to some shows. And I have to, I have to really thank these guys because listen to the show, these guys and, and Elizabeth, because I'm listening to the show and there was that the TV show arrow, which some of you may have may, may be watching. And I had completely dismissed it because I hated those posters with the shirtless dude who plays, who's playing the green arrow. Right. I just didn't like it. I thought, oh, no, it's another, it's another Smallville, which I'm not a fan of Smallville. But listening to comic issues, they really convinced me, like, hey, th this, there's good stuff to like in this. I mean, look, it's not, there's always stuff to complain about, like the, the fact that they, you know, changed the name of Star City to Starling City and just like weird changes that actually make, there's no reason to make that change, but they do it anyways. But, but just listening to them talk about that, they d talked about uh, Dark Knight, they talked about, you know, Comic-Con. So I listened to key episodes, really was excited to be on there and they did not disappoint. What's interesting is, is that we just, uh, it was this whole conversation we have is structured around the casting of the Justice League movie, which is still in development. I guess they've announced a, a date. There's no casting, but the the pretty much the, the podcast is all is is centered on uh, talking about casting the Justice League of America, the JLA movie. And these guys brought these incredible graphics. Each of them had their picks. I made fun of their picks. It, it was a fun live conversation, 
and I, I, th- I think you'll really enjoy it. Our live shows are, are uh, we're sort of figuring out different, there's sort of different incarnations of our live shows. There's ones where I crash podcasts, there's one, ones where I'm just on the podcast live, there's other ones like at iOS where there are shows. And speaking of that, let's get some plugs in. Uh, Saturday, December 8th, I'm going to be uh, crashing the Defective Geeks. It's going to be like a geek girl, a palooza. On, on Saturday, December 8th at uh, iOS. That's at 7.30. You can get more information at facebook.com slash podcrash. Uh, so so you, should, you should come to that live show. Also, a couple other plugs. Why don't you check out our YouTube channel? It's, it's, check that out, youtube.com slash podcrashtv. Uh, follow the show at Podcrash Show. Follow me at that Chris Gore. All right, enough plugs. Let's get, let's get right to this. San Diego Comic Fest, I really, I would not have been there without a very dear friend of mine, uh, Dwayne Dimmick. Now, Dwayne, I have known Dwayne for years because I've been going to Comic Con for 20 years now. I've been going to Comic Con for 20 years. San Diego Comic Con, okay? And Dwayne Dimmick was one of those guys that, like, he's, he's this deadpan humor that you're not sure if he's telling a joke, but he is telling a joke. He once spent an entire Comic-Con once with half of a mustache. So half of his face was shaved, and he had a mustache only on one side of his face. I'm making a motion with my hand to d- to denote this, which you will never be able to see because you're only hearing this. But but Dwayne Dimmick is is just this weird character who... He would sell in the day some bootleg DVDs. If it was not available legally on DVD, he would have a way. I would, I would pick up some of those bootlegs along with like bootleg rare CDs and just weird toys that he would make. So he has like this really eclectic, you know, collection of weird toy stuff that he sells. And uh, Dwayne's just an awesome dude. He's involved with San Diego Comic Fest. He invited me down. So if you ever, if you ever, I don't know, if you ever go to Comic Con or any of these things, look, find Dwayne Dimmick. The guy is my favorite weirdo. Okay, so here we go. Comic issues. This is the Chris Gore. Welcome to the show. My name is that Chris Gore. Welcome to San Diego Comic Fest. Um, I'm excited to be here outside of San Diego in Hotel Circle which everyone knows is the best place to stay during Comic-Con in July. It's not. It's one of the shittiest places to, place to stay. But it's also, if you... Li- I feel like the, this environment that we're in right now, it's kind of cosplaying as the set from The Prisoner. You know? Because it's like we're on this complex, and it's, I feel like I'm on the TV show The Prisoner, the 60s one. I, 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 I don't know. I get that feeling. Also, um, as I did a panel early this morning, my name is Chris Gore, by the way. I do this show called Podcrash. Thank you for showing up. First of all, it's amazing. 600 people was my goal. They're all here. 600 people in this room. Give yourselves a round of applause, everybody. 600 was my goal. I counted as I walked in the door. I kind of feel like, I feel like in a way, like, because I've been going to Comic-Con since I was a kid. Or they would be sort of like a, a little add-on to car shows. You know, you go to a car show and it's like, Adam West is signing. Leonard Nimoy, television's Dr. Spock, is signing. So that's kind of like the genesis, right? Right? But, but coming here to this thing, because they did describe it as like a retro uh, version of Comic-Con, I kind of feel it's like San Diego Comic Fest. Damn, we're old. Because <laughs> I... Wow. Yeah. Like, we're all... Like, I'm... Fucking old. I've been coming to these things for so long. I'll bleep out the fuck later on the show. Um, I'm really pleased to be here uh, for this because I get to talk about one of my favorite things, uh, comic books and all things geekery, on a podcast that I just discovered, actually, called Comic Issues. And I have to admit, I listened to, like, three episodes of the show as I was driving down my four-hour drive down to San Diego. I took the long way specifically because I wanted to listen to episodes of this of their show and I'll, I'm going to bring them I'm going to bring them on the stage in just a second I'm going to bring them on the stage they're hiding actually in the back room right now but I am going to bring them up in the back this is for the listeners that are listening to this that have no idea what's going on see this is the thing by you guys showing up to something like this this is something where you get to you get to get something you get something out of this by being here live that someone that would just you know, be listening to this on the podcast, they don't get. They don't get that live experience. They get, you guys get the visuals, so you're special. You're very special. Yes, yes. And old, and old. Thanks, Rex. Was that you, Rex? 
You said that? No. I'll admit to it, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to talk about all things geeky. Um, I, I, I feel like what I love about, you know, podcasts like Comic Issues and just hanging around places like Comic-Con... And what I love about Geek Podcasts is really like, it's the kind of conversations where there was this Laserdisc store that I would shop at when I lived in Pasadena where people would want to find out when I, when I was going to go there because me and the, the guy who ran the shop would talk for like hours and hours endlessly about stuff. I feel like this was, this was like in the 90s. That was sort of like how, then that's also, we'd have these conversations that were so in-depth. It's the kind of conversations you have at like a Comic-Con all the time. You have these really in-depth conversations about incredibly nerdy stuff, like why would a robot from the future have an Austrian accent? It makes no freaking sense. Why did the two, the two people who escaped the dome cities did they have British accents? What were, what was their deal? Um, talking about Logan's Run. Come on, <laughs> come on, oldies, back me up. I remember that movie. I just watched it. Got Logan's Run on Laserdisc and Blu-ray. What do I need the Laserdisc for? I don't know. Coaster? William F. Nolan talks about making a Logan's Run sequel in that, which didn't ever happen. Uh, William F. Nolan, the, the author of the original novel of Logan's Run. Come on! Come on! Wait, is it too early in the morning for nerd references? Yeah, um, not to bring you, Not to bring you guys down and depress the shit out of you. Uh, but um, as much as all your stuff is mint in box at this moment, um, it's all going to be destroyed December 21st, 2012, according to the Mayan calendar, according to Nostradamus. This is all going away. It's going to be the end of the world. And um, you keep that stuff mint in box all you want. It's not going to happen um, because that's where the world's supposed to end. Nostradamus predicted it. But I, here's what I thought, because I actually met, met an anthropologist once who was a 2012 theorist. They, that's a job, apparently, a 2012 theorist. I said to him, I said, look, because um, I had seen that movie 2012 with John Cusack, which is freaking, it's disaster porn. What, that's what that movie is. It's disaster porn. It's John Cusack, right? California falls into the ocean. There's things blowing up all over the place. And, uh, and I just said to this anthropologist, I said, look, um, I, I, maybe I'm crazy, but is it possible that the Mayans and Nostradamus in their mind's eye, that they saw the trailer for 2012? <laughs> And somehow they thought that was the end of the world, and then it really... And the anthropologist actually answered back, that's a very interesting theory. That's actually possible. That could be true. And then I asked him, like, wouldn't it be cool if you could go back to the 17, 1700s and actually show people from that era Star Wars? What would they think of the movie? Um, so we got this all... It's a very nerdy conversation. I'm not impressing you with my nerd knowledge. I thought that's why we're all here is to uh, is to is to laugh. But let me let me let me bring the comic issues team on stage. I, I have to say I love this is my new favorite podcast because we all hate the same things. We all hate that when they make stupid changes in TV shows based on characters that we've loved forever. Let's bring them on stage. Big applause, comic issues. And this is the time where I, I actually am now a guest on their podcast. They're going to take over. It's now their podcast. Uh, hey, introduce yourselves to the listeners. How are we doing, everybody? This is Comic Issues. I'm the host, Anthony Silva, along with two of my most favorite geeks in the world, Elizabeth Wallace. Hey, everybody. Woo! And Mr. Andrew Klein. Hey. Thanks for having me on your show. Wait, you didn't introduce me? You are the Chris Gore. Oh, that Chris Gore. Oh. Who's, who's counting? But, I mean, yeah, but no, this is great. I really, I can't thank you guys enough. Like, the fact that you're here, um, we're able to do this podcast. Uh, and it's kind of like, it's, this is great. It's like the inception of podcasts. This is meta. Yeah. yeah. I'm on your show. You're on my show. Everybody At the same wins. time. Everybody wins. So I'm excited to hear what we're going to talk about. The biggest news, essentially, that uh, has happened recently uh, that is not comic issues and our bat stash... Oh, yeah. And our uh, chest uh, shaving, chest piecing of Batman dum. I love your bat stash. Can I just say how cool I think that is? Like that is just so. You want to join me? I, I well, I'd have to grow some facial hair. But I but I got a I've, couple weeks. I've, I've I've seen that done before. I think that is so. That's badass. Actually, it is sort of badass, isn't badass. it? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna take your word for it because I've been a little nervous about it. Oh come on, you gotta do it. It'll be it'll be. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm oh, doing that's it. Awesome. How many likes do you have to get for your page? 
Uh, well, the goal was 250 to get the bat stash. Right. We, we jumped in two weeks, uh, almost you did 100. That in two weeks? In, in almost uh, two weeks, we got almost 100 likes. So we hit that. Now, 400, I was high or drunk or both. And on the <laughs> well, podcast, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. in the moment, I said, screw it, 400 likes, and I'll shave the bat symbol into my chest. I think you go for a thousand. I think around a thousand's a round number. It is when they start to renumber comics. Has there ever been a comic that's gotten up to a number thousand issue no. yet? No. no. Has there, because they always seem to renumber them. Why yeah. do they yes. do that? Why do they renumber? Well, six hundred, whatever. We'll call it the Spectacular Spider-Man or whatever. Isn't that coming up soon? Action and uh, Detective got into the nine hundreds. Very close. And then reboot. <sighs> I, I don't like when they do that. No. It's some bullshit. Yeah, but so so what is your page so everybody can go there and like it? Because I liked it on multiple accounts that I have on Facebook. Which is awesome. Just so you know, it all counts. We have the Facebook, facebook.com backslash comic issues. We have Twitter, uh, comic issues pod there. The website, www.comic issues.com. Uh, you can pick up everything that we're doing. The podcast uh, is weekly, every Wednesday, as appropriate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, there's a question, though, uh, for you in particular. So, a bat uh, tramp stamp, how many likes would that be? A million D. Uh, <laughs> oh, come man. on. Yeah. So I, feel like, I feel like at 10,000, you got to get a bat tramp stamp. you got to do it. <laughs> Who's ever going to see it? Who's ever going to see it? We Except for your lovely wife. wife. My shamed future children. Right? <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> As they look at me with disgrace. Yeah, but that'll be an era when kids have tattoos anyways. Can you imagine yeah. if, if you were a kid and got a tattoo? Can you imagine, like, full back tattoo on some kid? Like, you know, you, you're 30, you've got, like, a SpongeBob SquarePants tattoo, but you got them when you were six. That would be – I'm glad that they don't let kids under 18 get uh, get tattoos because you know, that would be bad. As soon as the tattoo removal gets better, yeah, that, that's they're just going to throw away the age restriction altogether because right. what's what's the harm? Right, right. And then you'll have a tattoo for a week and then get it removed. I haven't just crashed your podcast. I think I've derailed it because you actually have topics and issues and you guys prepared professionally. We, we took which a It's something I never do. So I want to see how I want to see I want to see how you guys work. You see how this goes? I want to see what you right. do. Okay. Sweet. First, we all have to be in my dining room. <laughs> yes. Right. right. And then you guys can come. Uh, so essentially, on a nor- any normal podcast, we'll pick a topic to shoot for. From there, it goes anywhere that happens. But we decided with the news of the Justice League being confirmed for 2015, we would try and cast that. Castings uh, of comic book movies is something we've done before with Excalibur. We've done it with Teen Titans. So we figure, why not uh, see what kind of what, what, what can we come up with for Justice League and uh, kind of pick the new 52 as the roster because it's a good kind of roundabout like starting cast. Yeah. Right. So we figured we start with Aquaman. Yeah, go ahead and hit it. Beep. <laughs> So Aquaman, not the most popular. Uh, really, uh, I don't think you could get someone too big for it. Cause this one's easy, Chris Evans, and he also will not dye his hair blonde. It'll be the four- third superhero character he- that he's played where he won't dye his hair blonde. That's my prediction, Chris Evans as Aquaman. That's my, my vote if I have for a For all the heroes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, dye your hair, dude. Yeah. You're Steve Rogers. Blonde hair. You're J- Johnny Storm. Blonde hair. Dye your hair. Chris Evans, dye your hair. That's my new Facebook group. But, um, and I will dye my hair blonde if I get 200 likes. No. Sue Storm, though, for the Fantastic Four, that was a mess. Between the first and second, dyeing the hair, the... Super blue eyes. That was creepy. Yeah, and that yeah. second one. Yeah, well, the, I, both of them. The fan, all of them actually. The the, the Roger Corman unseen one. Ooh, oh, which that's which a, uh, that's a classic. Well, yeah, which we've you know, uh, yeah, that's a also. fan film gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, ex- <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that would be my vote for Aquaman. Would would be Chris Evans. What do you guys think? I mean, it. Uh, my pick was Army Hammer. No, dude from Entourage. Entourage. Dude, well, yeah, that's the, that's the yes, given. The that's guy the from given. Uh, Entourage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy Piven would be great. <laughs> Jeremy Piven would be great as Aquaman. Look at this kid, though. This is the uh, the hot Australian guy from House. Oh, he's that's nice. essentially his only credit. Oh, wait, but, you guys, you guys went with serious picks. Those, yeah. are, those oh, are actually oh, well I thought out. Chris, I spent hours. We on take this. Oh my! Oh, I love I, it. I love I it. I step back. I'm like, okay, he's too old. He's too short. She's too young. I. Oh. This is you could work at a studio. This is what yeah. they do all day is come up with this. Call song. me. <laughs> uh, I figure 
just kind of based on looks alone, he's a well enough actor. I felt, you know what? Why not? His hair certainly has, has a look. He, he looks like an Aquaman. <laughs> he he's got that like nice blue eyes, eyes, blonde hair. He doesn't have to dye his hair. He's good. Also, the other thing is, is I feel like if you're going to be in a superhero movie, you either need to have a career that could use a bump, or you don't. You basically will just do it for cheap. So you're playing a superhero movie. You're basically just establishing yourself. So I, I think I think that's the case with this. I mean, Jesse Spencer. Should I should I know him? Oh, fuck, I, right. I, I said him? the wrong name. What? I think I said Army Hammer. Oh, yeah. He Wait, was a pick. He was a pick. I was thinking about Army right? Hammer. Yeah, everybody sees. I mean, his name is in the mix for what? Because he's playing the Lone Ranger. So like, yeah, 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 we already know or that Johnny Dip's right? sidekick is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To bizarreness with the Raven thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Jesse Spencer. Not, Jesse Spencer's yeah, I, my pick. I've that's never right. I've never heard of him. Is he like? He's just on House. Oh, he's on House. Okay. Yeah. And, and now that's that, over, so he can, needs can some work. Swim? I mean, that's a question. Did you did you find? Can that he out? swim? Yeah, I assume so. He's okay. from Australia. Oh, they're then, born yeah. swimmers. Well, yeah, and he's dealt with sharks. It's, you know. <laughs> oh, my my pick. Let's go for Aquaman. Ah, I went for the Lannister. Some Jamie Lannister because I can't pronounce this dude's name. I think it's Nikolai Coster Waldo. I'm gonna throw that out there with a question mark. From the, the Game of Thrones? Good right? Game of Thrones. Good okay. pick. I like Look your at pick. that jaw. That guy has, it's just, it's, he has a very regal look to him. The jaw is important when you're looking for a hero. You yeah. can't have no soft jaw. No, you gotta have You need to chisel nice. ice off that jaw. Yeah, exactly. So I, I went with, uh, you know, some Lannisters. They always pay debt, you know. <laughs> it didn't work out. And uh, Aquaman's a royal family. Exactly. Thor underwater, essentially. I see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, I still mind up there. Yeah. Well, I'm not even going to try and say his name. I'm just going to say Hilo from Battlestar Galactica. I think he could totally pull it off. Yeah. He's got the muscles for it, certainly. I'm totally in the way here. And um, he has a lot of pictures with his shirt off when I have his shirt off. Right? So we've already he seen totally it. Does. So also, he you know, both as Hilo and as Paul from Dollhouse, he could pull off a little holier-than-thou attitude every once in a while, which is good if you're going to be a prince. I think it translates well. Yeah, I like yeah. your pick. I like your pick. I, th- I think he would be great too. Thank I think. And there's also, you know, he is, you know, known enough yeah. from Battlestar Galactica. So, yeah, not too big yeah. of an actor, not, not too, too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can't argue he is awfully pretty. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, who's uh, who's the next one in line? I'm mean, cyborg. Oh, cyborg. Yeah, this this was a fun one actually. This one's uh, it was kind of tough. Uh, I at least tried to approach it from uh, like a young actor. I was t- kind of following the new 52 story, so I need a young black actor who I feel is going to be the heart of the movie. So I chose John Boyega. There it is. Uh, from Attack the Block, he plays uh, Moses. Anyone see Attack the Block? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> You're my dude. Uh, what's, I think- what's funny is I also chose John Boyega. And uh, he's, he's also yeah no that's a great movie it's a great movie too yeah no he that was a great film I, it's, uh, yeah he did amazing he I was, was really impressed and he started as a non actor really yeah like, I mean not an experienced actor and they it's, they just got an amazing performance out of him so no. I'm already I, I you and I are in total agreement yeah oh, first the night. Nice. Um, nice. yeah I feel as long as he can drop the English accent because it's heavy. You see him in interviews, it's heavy. But I don't know, Aquaman, does Aquaman have an accent? Does he have, like, what's the underwater you know, he's accent? He's not from here. He's not from here. So he but he's kind of regal, right? Yeah. yeah. He's kind of regal, so maybe he's sort of british Yeah, he has, like, the brave and the bold kind of, you know, accent going. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be the approach to Aquaman. I mean, as we all know from the Super Friends in the 1970s and 80s, um, that uh, Aquaman just sort of spoke in a normal voice, but that doesn't yeah. mean that that's... How he actually talks. We've never heard Aquaman talk in a film. Mm-hmm. Maybe he has a British accent. Why did I say Aquaman? I meant Cyborg. What did I say? <laughs> I got off on Aquaman. Sorry. I am so. I'm at like two hours of sleep, folks, so I'm out of it. You need a little. Uh, you need I need, your, you know what? what? I'm going to do my zombie yeah, shot. Yeah, let's, right let's now. stop for a second. Do my zombie shot. Chris found a, a zombie energy drink. Zombie blast. It's, it comes in a shell casing, and I'm going to drink this because I really need it. Oh and now God. we can watch him as he. Does the ingredients have like the T virus in it, or is it? <laughs> T virus. Number no one yeah. ingredient. We're all infected, you know. I know. We're all infected. Uh, so Andrew, uh, your pick. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Sinequa, uh, Sinequa Walls. This dude, he had, he looks the part to me. He's a little bit older than you know your pick, but certainly he just like just looking at him, let alone he's actually from Teen Wolf. And when I went and looked him up, you son of a oh, bitch. I know. I, just, I, I can't you... claim this pick completely because my coworker she was just like, oh, this is the perfect person. Sure. I go and look him up, and he's playing a lacrosse. It's not quite football, 
you know, like sideboard plays. But I was just like, it's close enough. He looks the part. <laughs> he, yeah, he's uh, he definitely looks like he's got the physicality for it. Yeah, he's buff. He, he looked like he'd be a perfect cyborg where he's not too old, but not too young either. Because I didn't want to have like a kind of a kid on the team. I wanted to have him be kind of more adult, but not completely there yet. No, in, in my Justice League movie, he becomes cyborg in the beginning. Oh, okay. I guys, I wrote this whole thing in my head. Oh, you had a script going. Oh my almost. god. I'm about to put it down on wax and send it off. Do they, make... Did they announce what characters? I mean, obviously, no. it's sort of the big three. Nothing is announced. But it's, well, they say they're shooting 2013 for release in to start. 2015, and it's basically going to be Avengers versus the JLA that yeah. summer. Yeah, yeah. Which seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> I, I agree. I think it's, it's, um, it's yeah. Gotta, it's got to be in an off year where you're just having, like, another Thor yeah, or Cat kind of movie. Right. Like, to put, a, put, to put the two head-to-head... That's going to be trouble. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also, like, it could, there could just be superhero fatigue at this point. Yeah. Totally. Well, especially, are they still saying that they're not going to, like, have movies to introduce the JLA? They're going to have everybody's origin story in the no. same movie? Yeah. That's going to drag yeah. it yeah. down yeah. amazingly. It, it would be, it would, just, I mean, if, if anyone's going to call them out, ah, you're copying Marvel, fine, it worked. Yeah. If yeah. it ain't broke, don't go fix it. it. Yeah. Or they could just go backwards. They could just make the JLA movie, and you can always tell Wonder Woman's origin later mm-hmm. or whatever. I think we're going to get Superman's new origin in this new Man of Steel movie, right? Probably, so, but, okay. but that movie's not going to be connected to the Justice League movie. Oh, really? It's yeah. a totally different thing? It's going to be totally different. So, so is wow. the Affleck still doing the directing, though? Uh, rumored, uh, not confirmed, not... Oh, yeah. uh, I no, think I heard he's not. I heard yeah. that. All right. That's I, I, was, I was hoping. I trust Chris. He's been on TV. We've just yeah. watched it. Exactly. Because when <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. I watch a lot of other people on TV. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> That's fair. That's why podcasts. That's where you got to get your news from. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. Right? I'm with you. There is no media filter here. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I heard you swear on your podcast. I know oh, yeah. Cool. We've swore. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a challenge. I did one podcast where I didn't swear. Wow, you put the little clean label on yeah, iTunes. Yeah, yeah. Lucky that, you. That ah. one podcast. The, yeah, I've got like two that have clean on. That's great. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, uh, what was your pick? Well, I went with uh, Makad Brooks, who played Eggs in True Blood, also one of the sexy neighbors in Desperate Housewives, and a football player on Unnecessary Roughness. So I thought oh, that really worked well. Let's not hold Brooks Unnecessary started. Roughness against him. No, but he did a good job in it, I thought. But uh, yeah, Cyborg starts out, uh, certainly in the New 52, if we want to go that direction. He was a football player originally, so we can drag that in there. You need, also, you need good a looking dude. solid build. Yeah, sure, mm-hmm. absolutely. He can certainly, he was a little, uh, kind of a skinny drink of water in uh, True Blood, but he could bulk up when he needs to. Yeah, sure, put him on the yeah. Christian Bale exercise oh, program. Yeah, yeah. You go from 90 pounds to 220. Or you can do that, or the Arrow one, where you can do those pull-ups. <laughs> His ads right in the screen. Chris, did you happen to hear uh, us talking about Arrow? Is yes, I did. I lo- First of all, that was a great conversation because you brought up something that really bothers me, which is unnecessary changes. Like, you know, the, they the changed the city, city, Star City yeah. to Starling City. What's the point of that? Yeah, it was bizarre. Um, yeah. And I, I know a lot of people... The people there that are fans of Smallville, I don't understand why, because it's an entire show. Let's take all the parts of the Superman story, you know, the parts where he's not a superhero and just where he's like growing up, which might make one good movie. Let's spread that over ten seasons and and, and make everything seem like it's, it was torture to me. And I think that's that kind of thinking. They're trying to make it their own, and there's there's. Those unnecessary changes are so irritating. And didn't it kind of, kind of get better the more comic booky they got? Like the last well, couple of seasons, like with JSA and all well, that. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I just didn't care. It's like you know what? Have an accurate costume. Be accurate at least to the, the character. Yeah. You can change something, but what's what what is, what's the upside of changing the names of things? There's a reason why you pick this franchise to make stuff out of. Why go around and start changing everything about it? Absolutely. Yeah, I felt like you I, you and I have the same mind of that. It just was – it's so irksome when they do that. I, it's, it's, it's annoying. That's why I think that Marvel has done so well with the – I feel like they pay respect to the source material. And it's not going to be – I mean it's sort of a – It'll never uh, be perfect. It'll never be perfect. It's, they don't, it's not really a storyline, but it's like this is the essence of that character. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Oh, totally. Absolutely. You know, I mean, all, all the, the, the actors, they got, they really just embody, they go for the, the essence of the character. The story, it's like, okay, they kind of borrow story material here and there from different things. But that first Iron Man is the thing that sold me. It's like, I'm yeah. in with the oh, Marvel yeah. Universe. Yeah, it's so solid. 
Yeah, I even like the second one mostly. Yeah, the a lot of people one, like to shit on it, but yeah, I just think that they tried to shoehorn too much of that Shield stuff that I didn't care about, and yeah. it's just, it was all like a build up to the Avengers. It's like I, we don't need it. It's better to have like. The end, and I love how Marvel has now trained people to stay for the credits because that's like a thing that I love to do when I go to a movie is like I just watch all the credits. It's easier to get out. Everyone will be gone in the parking. But like Marvel's like, oh, and where people will say at the end of this movie is there something at the very end? Like yeah. That's a thing now. It's yeah, a it thing is. now. And I think that is so cool. And I really feel like that's what you put the extraneous stuff that has nothing to do with the main story is put it after the credits. Yeah. You don't have it as a thread because it's not going to pay off for, an, for another movie. So it's irrelevant. Yeah. So um, I'll sit at the end of every movie. I'll make fun of the names in the uh, credits mm-hmm. and just wait. Is Nick Fury going to show up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where's Samuel Jackson? What is he doing right now? Nick there? Fury should show up in movies he was in that have nothing to do with Marvel. Yeah. Movies. Yeah, that would be absolutely. great. That I just, would be so great at the end of Inception. He shows up. That's a damn top. <laughs> Give me that to get out. This is all a dream. Bullshit. <laughs> Motherfuckers, I'm fucking Nick Fury. This bullshit. So that would be great if he just showed up in every, at the end of, after the credits of every movie. I really wanted to see him at the end of Frank and Weenie. He, he would be great in That'd that, be too. Amazing. Son, you've got a lot of promise there. Yeah. Nick, I think Nick, yeah, Nick Fury should be do the end of every film. Every movie. And you know what? Samuel Jackson would do it. Yeah. If oh, someone just offered it, it to him, him, he'd do it. He, he would do it. He'll do any character. Yeah. Samuel, anything for a dollar, Jackson. Yeah. Uh, who's who's next on our yeah, list? Batman. 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 There it is. Okay. Uh, whoa. I feel like this should be debated first. What's okay. the criteria for Batman? Is this Dark Knight Batman? Is this Schumacher Batman? Oh, oh, no. is, it, is it Schumacher Batman? Which, which Batman are we gonna do? Um, so yeah, which which sort of like vision? How do you see him fitting into the JLA? I mean, I like when they relaunched Justice League back in the eighties, um, and Batman was just kind of this like quiet. Badass that people yeah. were scared. They were scared of in the group. Mm-hmm. I hope that that's the dynamic they go for. I don't know what it is now because if I bought comics every week, I wouldn't have any money. So I I, oh. I avoid them. Um, but what what do you guys see as like you know how? I mean like who who could fill the suit? Mm-hmm. Well, starting with yours actually. Well, all right. um, my my angle when I was mentally casting Batman is I want someone who would probably be the oldest of the group. Because Batman, he's not going to start crime fighting at 25. He's, he's going to start, you know, early as, as humanly possible. He's the perfection, the, the, the epitome of, of human possibilities. So he would be the experienced one. You know, Superman shows up, he's got powers, it's easy for him. Batman, he's worked for it. So I figure, okay, early 30s, I need someone who looks age-appropriate, who's got the physicality, who's got a good, nice brooding look to him. When I, when I put the slide together, I certainly was like, mm, yeah, that, that looks really nice. He'd make it nice. I chose Luke Evans from, uh, he just did The Raven, uh, Don't Hold It Against Also him. did Four Musketeers. Yes, that's right. That's what I found when I Google search. But, but, he, but he's good. I, I, I actually would, I would stand by that choice. I, I, I like that choice. Yeah. It's interesting. It's different. I don't like Army Hammer. I know they've thrown his name around. Yeah, I, I don't talking. want Army Hammer to play baking soda. That's like I he shouldn't even play that. I I thought he was great um, in you, social network, but yeah. Luke Evans, good pick. Did you see uh, Mirror Mirror at all? Oh, I never saw it. <laughs> I never saw that movie. Nice. You're lucky. Uh, but Luke Evans, I, I think I think it's a solid pick, and you're right. He should be it. kind of a, a little bit the, the the wiser element. But I also think that you're right. Like if you have superpowers, you're cheating. I feel like Batman's kind of guy. Like, come on, outside, no powers. Yeah. Let's go outside, yeah. no powers. Clark, out there, and just to see, just to I think that'd be funny. It's easy for that'd Superman. Where's Superman scars? Right. Yeah. You know, Batman head to toe scars. Oh, Superman scars. They're internal. They're in their inside. You need my, my parents are dead too. Sometimes like that's what Superman would say. Yeah. yeah, they're sometimes dead. Sometimes, sometimes I guess dead. depending on uh, that's right continuity. Uh, sorry, my parents were parents shot. Are... They didn't have time to make a hologram of themselves, yeah. giving you advice on everything. My father's so... not the Godfather. Shit. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I went for continuity. I actually chose uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So. I see you uh, took a... a yeah, that sucks. There, that, okay, that so uh, first of all, we have our first really shitty choice. No, yeah. oh, oh, this no, is no, awful. No, no, this no, is, no, this no, is no, the no, worst. Because no. the whole thing is the dumb thing they threw out, Dark Knight Rises, sorry, no, spoiler, no, no. Yeah. Robin. His name is Robin. It's so dumb. Yeah. They should have called this Robin Begins with Dark Knight Rises. I have some issues with that movie. <laughs> i I'm sure, I got to listen to your episode where you guys talk about it. 
But um, yeah, I, it, it bugged me because there's all this lead up to it, but it's just a throwaway at the end. It's yeah, a throwaway well, thing. Well, and also, well, Nightwing, gayest costume in comics. I'm sorry. All right, well, let's be honest. Well, the Nightwing. I like the new Nightwing it, costume. The, there is a, oh god, a, a that new big Nightwing collar. Costume. We've said it plenty yeah, of times. That big collar no, is a sin. Yeah, yeah, that big collar is good for the sin. ice capades, but yes. not like it's like. <laughs> no, seriously, it'd be great. Like ice capades. I see or it. I saw that Batman live. That would be a cool costume in that show. <laughs> Did anyone see Batman live? No. Come on! Right, yeah. 600 people and not one of you? Is this is this the horse show that's happening? The little trinkety horse show that's happening at the convention center? Yes. Which I am totally getting drunk and crashing. After this. <laughs> I am so getting plastered and going to the show next door. Do you know this? There's a show next door where they're... I, I met the saddest guy in the elevator. I'm like, what are you doing here? You're here for the comic fest. Because, you know, nothing else is happening here this weekend. No, there is a show happening where ladies collect... Little tiny trinkety horses, and I am so getting drunk that I am going to. Uh, yeah, come on, let's get. I'll get all equestrian on that. That's that's badass. Got any Mustangs here? That's a that's a pretty good Mustang, you guys. Will you please, will you please film that. I am, I am so gonna film that myself going to the Trinkety Horse Show. I'm just calling it the Trinkety Horse Show because I have no idea what it's actually called. But I'm gonna go there. But I'm gonna be so serious, and I'm gonna criticize everyone's purchase. You bought that? How much did you pay? Really? You got robbed. No way. I'd go in there like a brony convention. A bro- is yeah, there bronies? Are there bronies there? Oh, sure. Oh, I am in. I'm sure the bronies are going in there and uh, they are, oh my God. they're thinking of something else. Yeah. They see all their grandmas there with little, uh, you know, porcelain unicorns and shit. Forget the Batman tramp stamp. Go there with like a horse tail. <laughs> You'll get some action at that trinkety horse show. Get a lot of old um, going yeah, on. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have derailed it. But Joseph Gordon Levitt, I thought he would have been a good Robin if he actually was yes. Robin. And I feel like they missed a huge opportunity with the Gotham Rogues because as a lot of people pointed out, the R in Rogues is the R from Robin. Had they even had some connection, that stupid bullshit scene where Bane comes in and the corner of the is saying he's speaking to a stadium of drunk Gotham Rogues fans that are like, Woo! They blow up, blew up the stadium, this is awesome, this is the pre-show. So drunk, and basically his message is, Take back your city. Take back your city. You need to take back your city. What? Yeah. So these, these people that are drinking Gotham Lights at Gotham Stadium, <laughs> watching the Gotham Rogues in their Gotham Rogue jerseys with the Big Robin R, have, they, I, I feel like they would be, after the tailgate party and after that happened, would be like, the mayor's dead, I guess. This was the word. I'm a season ticket holder. I don't know what is going on at Gotham I'm just gonna stare at the Stadium. Hole. But had they made some connection, for example, they sold, this is how nerdy I am, they sold Gotham Rogues, the, the zombie juice is kicking in, yeah, yeah. Picking they up sold theme. Gotham right. Rogues jerseys and hoodies online as like a, a collectible thing for Dark Knight Rises, and it has that R. Had Joseph Gordon-Levitt, after the line where, maybe he has, maybe he, maybe he has a brother mm. that plays on the team, right? Maybe he was killed during that. Maybe as a tribute, he wears the Gotham Rogues jersey that has the R, and then when Batman says to him, if you're going to work alone, you should wear a mask. Then he puts on the mask, he's got the R, boom, then it fits into the Nolanverse r- r- reality. I've always thought that that, that was a total fucking missed opportunity. Oh, well, absolutely. That was a missed opportunity. That movie so, is two and a half hours long it's already. It's two and a half hours, yeah. He just kicked so, it three. fuck your Joseph Gordon-Levitt choice for Batman. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the worst you know, choice yeah. ever. I, I, think it's I, I know you have a new baby, and I should be sensitive, right? You just oh, said no, baby? Yes, it is. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a boy or a girl? I think a boy. A boy, great. Yep. Bring him up a nerd. nerd. Bring Yours. him up a nerd. He has nerd. a uh, Batman onesie. He has so, a Green Lantern onesie. Oh my god, this is so great. Oh, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I totally think your choice still sucks. But, no, I agree. But, um, I'm, so, so, so little, you and me, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. I, can't. I, can't. I, this this yeah, I mean, that, that picture that I saw on Pinterest of this, I, I, yeah. just, I was like, all right, you, you have to Under different it. circumstances, I think he'd be an amazing Nightwing. Yeah, Nightwing, yes, certainly. At best. But I saw he that. He can so never fit Batman that shoes. That picture from Looper where he looks older, I was like, oh, when he gets older, he might actually be able to do it. But still. Like, we know Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt can dance, so let's, uh, he, can, he can dance. He can do the bad He's going to dance yeah. if you've seen him on Saturday Night Live or you've seen he other was, films in which he's appeared. Wake up, people. We'll, we'll, 
we were I'm waiting for this. Six hundred people showed up for this fight. Give yourself a round of applause. Six hundred. Thank you. You guys are the best. Cool. Uh, Elizabeth, who'd you pick uh, for Batman? Fast Bender. Uh, oh, she, oh, I don't know. I might have to. I would have to go with her oh. choice. I might have to go with Elizabeth's choice. No, I know. It's in here. She's got that brooding look going on. We've seen a lot of Fast Bender lately. We've seen a little. We've bit seen of, a lot of Fast Bender. Yeah, lately. we've seen a little bit of Little Fast Bender as well. So yeah, <laughs> There's nothing a little about Little Fast Bender. We've yeah. seen his Batman, yeah. so to speak. Uh-huh. Yeah. Totally pull it off. I totally. I just watched uh, Inglorious Bastards again the other day. Loved yeah. him in that. So you can play suave as well. He's an amazing Bruce actor. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, I, I saw your pick beforehand. I thought it's it's good, but I could I couldn't sign on for it. I did. Oh, why not? Because I, I feel my uh, Fassbender is is an amazing actor. He's done really well for himself. But just something about him, just looking at him. Uh, he's, he's, quite, quite, he's in like a leather chair. That's like Wayne Manor chair right he's there. Like that, the oh, I didn't know we were judging right on his there. furniture decor. I, I love it. I could see the bat bursting through the window right now, and he's like, "It's time," you know, <laughs> going right out. There. You can you can change your pick, uh, Joe. No, I, I actually I, when I put this together, Fastbender was the one I was kind of like leaning towards. It's I'm good. I, if, if we couldn't get Luke Evans, I'd settle for a Fastbender. All right, by by round of applause, Luke Evans, JGL. Michael Fassbender. <laughs> Elizabeth Wood. So we call Fassbender. 600 people like my choice. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, Green Lantern. Lantern. That was from that earlier. <laughs> so we'll, we'll tear through. Green Lantern, I chose... I think Ryan Reynolds would be great. Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> he is... He would, Ryan Reynolds... I feel he's, uh, yeah, he's just really excellently well. cast. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, that kid can do no wrong. He's in every other movie. Yeah. No, I chose uh, Little Thor from uh, Hunger Games, uh, from Expendables. At five minutes, he was there. I just really want to see Hemsworth versus Hemsworth for the summer of 2015. <laughs> I do like that idea. <laughs> uh, figure, you know, another nice young casting. He's got the physicality. I don't know. My pick kind of beats your pick, dude. Josh Duhamel? Oh, you should hear him talk. He has that Hal Jordan feel to him. I... I, I, I tend to agree with you. I actually think, yeah, that kind of makes up for your other shitty picks. <laughs> for, <laughs> for Batman. Cross canceled right there. Yeah. Yeah, he, has the, he definitely has the voice. I heard an interview with him and I was like, hot damn, this man has a good voice. He's charming, but he's not Van Wilder. I mean, yeah, like he's, he's good. Like, if you see Vegas, you know, I don't watch the Transformer movies. Oh, we got to forget before those. Yeah. Actually, he was one of the nice things about the Transformer movies. So <laughs> the only thing that didn't it. transform. Yeah, well. So. Uh, Elizabeth, what was your pick? Oh. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, oh, yeah. on, but it was not his fault. I think it's a good pick. No, it was I, I do like Ryan Reynolds. Uh, it's just it was. I felt it was a poor casting to give him Green Lantern instead of holding him for Flash. No, no. I thought he did a great. I mean, got Flash is like a perfect example of smart ass show off, but with like the heart of gold and everything. That's Ryan Reynolds right there. That's what he does, and so pretty, so very pretty. Chris, uh, do you have uh, somebody you'd want Thoughts to throw in there? One? Um, I, I don't know. I think I think Josh uh, Duhamel, uh, Duhamel was was. I, I actually think that's a better pick. I think he, he can play off the serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I wanted that. I wanted that Indiana Jones type of thing. You know, because that's what they kind of sold the original Green Lantern thing to me was that it's like Indiana Jones. He knows how to throw a punch, but how to tell a joke afterwards. Something fun and old. He's school. quippy. Yeah, he's quippy, but old school. Quippy. Spider-Man's quippy. Well, not Spider-Man. He's more smart assy. You know. I'm looking for something a little bit different. Yeah, but now Spider-Man rides a skateboard around. Yeah. He's so cool, which is, guys. He's so he's cool, cool with all the kids. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm that I, that I, I Spider-Man movie, what a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> if I could just echo what all of you are thinking. Yes. it's. I feel like when I saw it, I was like, wow, this reminds me of like when they added Poochie to Itchy and Scratchy. <laughs> you know, like, tried to make it hip and like relevant to the times, except... You know, yeah, but it's really split down the middle because I, I feel like younger fans who never read comic books like Spider Man, and then people who have actually read comic books and seen the Sam Raimi movies hate the new Spider Man. Is that pretty much how it's split? I I would say that's pretty accurate. I good, good. I like the first two Spider Man from Raimi. That third one? Oh. Yeah, well, we don't speak of that one. Yeah, the uh, jazz dance. And jazz I saw dance. Amazing Spider Man. <laughs> the only thing I liked about Amazing Spider Man was they gave him credit as a scientist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Even true. though I felt that always lacked in the Raimi films. Yeah, but you don't really. I don't really buy it. Yeah. I don't. Buy I also it. felt Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man ripped a lot from. 
the Raimi films. There's a lot of scenes in the, like the first Spider-Man movie that you can see mimicked in Webb's movie. And they didn't need to redo those scenes. They actually did worse view- versions of those scenes. Yeah. Like... You know, with great power comes great responsibility. But in that movie, it's like, well, if there's, if you have a power, power, power and you know, there's things you probably should do. Yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. You don't need to use your thesaurus. I think that that's been vetted <laughs> as a great phrase that should never be changed. Uh, so, uh, Flash. I hate your I, I forget. I, your I forget who I said. Right I don't have my notes on it. <laughs> right, hit it. Boop. Garrett Headland. Oh, no. No? Yes. no. Uh, first of all, yeah, I mean, he's in a movie surrounded by computers, and he was the most boring part. You know what I mean? <laughs> to be fair, like, That guy, oh. He was so, he's the thing that really ruined, because here's the thing is, I love Tron. I freaking hate that movie. That movie's god awful. It's how just, could it be so bad? I mean, they even had Daft Olivia Wilde's in it. Yes, they, they, them doing the soundtrack. I like all the merch for that. They have <laughs> this really cool like mouse pad and like all. That. I love the toys and uh, just everything about Tron. I love except for except the actual movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought the actual movie was terrible, and he's a big part of it because he's so stiff in it. It's yeah, just, yeah, he he's like just so robot. boring. But the dude. There we go. That's the dude. Well, the dude with the. Why do they have? You know, in the original Tron, they drank from that sea of energy, right? Like they're mm-hmm. drinking that. It's like, and then this new Tron, it's like we've got roast pig. If you'd like some roast pig here in computer land, and it was a total missed opportunity because they could have actually played on the cool thing about the original Tron. Because my my dad actually uh, worked with computers when the original Tron came out, and um, he he loved the fact that going to see Tron. Like, he knew all the terminology, bytes, RAM. This is real computer terminology, which yeah. wasn't common at the time, that was wo- wo- woven really effortlessly into the story, and it made sense. They anthropomorphized computer terminology and computer processes. In this, they don't pl- – the fact that we are more technologically savvy now than we've ever been. I mean, have you ever gone out with a chick that wasn't texting at some point during the day, right? Or All right, fellas, yeah. You've downloaded things off the internet. We, these are common things, right? Mm-hmm. And they, they did not take advantage of the common knowledge people have with technology. They, they could don't have bother had, with it. They could have had pirates, you know? They could have gone on the internet. They could have been... They, but they kept it to this like little board that's in a back room. Yeah. It was. St- I, I just. I could not hate that movie enough. I can't wait for the sequel. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when is Tron Legacy Two coming out? I want to buy the toys. <laughs> oh yeah, the animated series is pretty good. Uh, for my choice for Flash, I went with the Pie Maker uh, from Ooh. Pushing Daisies. Lee He's too old. Too old. Too old. It's awesome. It's a perfect choice. He has that kind of like fastness to him already. Like he seems like he's, he's no, he's a great actor. I love pushing daisies, but I think he'd fit perfectly. He looks for too old. Look at him. Look at him. He's not that old. <laughs> he's the pie maker. He brings things back from the dead. Come on. <laughs> Elizabeth, who'd you pick? Well, I had to go with uh, Michael Truco on this one. Uh, apparently, I have Battlestar Galactica things yeah. going on here, you know. But I think he could totally pull it off. He's got it's like look at Flash. He's a smart ass, but not as much as Green Lantern. So you've got to get an actor who's can pull off that little funny side, still be sexy. Is, but would not you so just much. would you describe him as a as a gilf, a Battlestar Galactica, like to you know. Guy, I'd like to yeah. Yeah. Yes. A Bissa Gilf? Yes. A Bissa yes, Gilf? I would. Yes, I th- yeah, okay, so that's what you need to refer to them as Bissa Gilfs from now on in your cast. I swear that guy, when he first shows up on BSG, I'm just like, ooh, who's that? that? Who's I that? like that. Just a heifer and he's coming. So, uh, Wonder Woman, this was one of the toughest castings oh, to, yeah, for totally. me to try and figure out. It's tough to find a woman who has the stature, who has the kind of physical presence of an Amazon. Olivia Munn. I think that that, she would be a good choice. <laughs> She's worn the outfit. Are you biased? I, 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 a little biased, yes. We've worked together. So I would, I would say Olivia Munn is Wonder Woman. So I think good. Uh, I went with someone who physically uh, kind of captures the role a little more. I went with uh, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe. Oh, who's might not be uh, very Too known. short. Next, probably who else? Let's go, let's go to mine. Oh, look, same code. And we picked nice Andrew Watt, the same yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Now, Not on purpose. Here's the reason I picked this. Uh, we had uh, Linda Carter eyes. She has Linda Carter eyes. You look that's fair. Close, light blue eyes. It, that's it's fair. Perfect. Elizabeth, uh, we gotta have Maggie Q, who's kicking ass on Nikita, but she's also doing the voice of Wonder Woman on Young Justice right now, and pretty enough for the role. 
a uh, great actress, really like her. Uh, only problem is she's a little on the short she's side. She's short, yeah, she's years. a tiny woman. That's okay, you know what? I hear Kevin Bacon is really short too, and he always looks real tall and lanky. They can film around. Give her the fucking Hobbit effects. Yeah. Yes, exactly, totally fine. They can make a Hobbits look tiny. Again, Elizabeth has the best choices, I'm sorry. Yeah? Uh, I think she beat everybody. I would say Elizabeth wins. Everyone is... Elizabeth, she won. It's like the best day ever. <laughs> so Superman... Um, it's it's tough to find someone who kind of has the, uh, the the natural presence, someone who looks like a good dude. You know, like Superman's the Boy Scout, so you gotta have a, an adult that looks like the Boy Scout. Ugh. I chose Army Hammer. I think he looks like a Boy Scout. I don't no. think he's I don't think he's good for Batman. Folks, what do you think? No. Six hundred people. Yeah, all the <laughs> <laughs> of them. Most of them don't even want a boo. They don't want to waste a, yeah, a lot of them. Waste. Why waste a boo on really a choice quiet out there. all agree blows? Yes. I'm going to count all the non-voters for myself then. Okay. okay. <laughs> Andrew? I, I stuck with Henry Cavill. I think he does it. I, he looks like Christopher Reeves. Dude. I've never jumped onto this but Look, he has the Superman curl no, already. He doesn't look like Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves is too much of a pretty boy. Henry Cavill's a man like Kirk Douglas. Well, yeah. Sir <laughs> Charlton Heston. <laughs> He's more. I think he's more of a badass. I think he. I think he could fill the suit. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah we'll find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. We don't have we a choice to see in a that. Trailer that's, that's gonna. Seriously, more. how have we gone so far with not a real trailer? Uh, it's driving well, me nuts. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. I think it's it's coming. like Christmas, right? Christmas. It's driving me crazy. Christmas. Elizabeth. Oh, what's that? I picked Henry Cavill too. Again, Elizabeth oh. with the best choices that I agree with every time. <laughs> Elizabeth. It's here, and you stepped outside of your safe zone with not going with the Basagilf. So I'm really impressed with what you came up with. Thanks, thanks, appreciate that's that. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's solid. No, nice. Uh, what do you think of what you've seen of the uh, Superman movie so far? Uh, the, the I movie? am not sure. I, I talked to Henry Cavill about it, and then he said it was the best script he's ever read. He's also um, in it. Yeah, he's also in it, so he's probably biased. And then I um, ran into a guy who worked in merchandise licensing at Warner Brothers who saw my car that's all tricked out like a Batmobile. It's a RAV4. It's not, there's not that much you can really do. RAV4s are badass. They're not. But, it's, but I kind of tricked it out. So, so um, he was telling me a little bit about it, and it sounds like it's just going to be a very serious take. It's very much the Chris Nolan take. On Superman. Superman. So I, I, I have high hopes. I'm always optimistic until I hate it. That's which fair. is usually when I'm seeing it. But I, I like to hold out hope for stuff. The, the general um, feeling that we have for the podcast is wait and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair. Can, can I can I switch gears for a second to ask? I'm here at San Diego Comic Fest, and I have. Some, I don't know if this is. Do you guys ever like bring your comics or weird collectible stuff here to see if it's worth something? Great. So what I did, I brought I, I I did one of the weirdest things early when I was doing a magazine called Film Threat. I interviewed Alan Moore, who's a freaking weirdo, right? Rest um, you? No, Alan Moore, the guy who created you know wrote Watchmen, Swamp Thing, among other things. I called him at home and asked if I could interview him. This was like in the '80s, like right around when Watchmen was coming out. I was a kid at the time, and I asked him. I was like. Could I interview you, but the phone's really expensive? Could I just mail you some questions? So I mailed Alan Moore a bunch of questions on typed out paper and left space for him to answer, and he mailed them back to me and hand wrote all of the responses. Uh, that's Alan Moore's handwriting. And, yes. and he signed it. He asks for a free subscription to Film Thread, gives Did me you give his it to him? home address, of course. Um, and I don't know, is this worth anything? Is this yeah. worth anything? Collectors? Like it's. It's um, Alan Moore breathed on this. Twenty five years old, and it's. I, I feel like because I see that show Comic Book Men on AMC, and by see it, I mean I see the ads and remind myself not to watch it because I think <laughs> it's just not a great representation of the community. Um, so, so um, thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me. I want to know this is a complete waste. I want to know that uh, the answers are wordy. They're wordy. Look, he's just yeah. cramming just them in like a test. Smash. I can't believe. Look at this. Yeah. He's got letters like falling over on top of other letters. But that's an Alan Moore panel right there, right? You know, in a comic book. That's half a panel. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. interview up now. Is uh, it on filmthreat.com? The, the interview, I think, is on filmthreat.com. You can find it somewhere. 
But um, unfortunately, we have to wrap it up. I, I could talk to you guys all day about this. this Absolutely. Stuff. Awesome. I, and, and I just want to thank San Diego Comic Fest, Dwayne Dimmick, who brought me out here. I want to thank Comic Issues. You we guys should thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah I, I want to thank you. You can follow me on Twitter at that Chris Gore. Follow my show at Pod Crash Show. And Pod Crash comes out. It's it's once a week on iTunes. You can you can find the show. Uh, and I just want to uh, say uh, thank you to you guys. And um, as I like to say at the end of my show, you guys all know what it is. Let's let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Thank you, Sadio Comic Fest. Thank you, Comic Issues. Thank you, Chris Carr. Thank you. You guys were great. Thank you. And all 600 of you, thank yourself. That's it for this week's show. I really want to thank Andrew, Anthony, and Elizabeth from Comic Issues. They they have a great podcast about about comic books. I mean it's I mean it's it's great from the standpoint of like they really are all informed while at the same time being very opinionated and simultaneously being passionate and a love of accuracy, which I I appreciate. So you can check out their uh, podcast. They're on iTunes. They're on Facebook. Also, you can go to comic-issues.com. You can also follow them on Twitter at Comic Issues Pod. And uh, they're, they're part of the Pixelated Geek Network which I really know nothing about. I just noticed that they're part of some pixel, the Pixelated Geek Network, which I'm sure is, I need to know more about this. I'm actually going to, I'm going to go to their website and actually get some more information. So I really want to thank them. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, you can check me out at that Chris Gore at Podcrash Show if you want to follow the, the, the Twitter for the show. And of course, we're on Facebook.com slash Podcrash. You can go to Podcrash.net. That's where all the Easter eggs are. So if you're hearing this and you start to get to the plugs, you're like already turning it off, right? Okay. The people that didn't turn it off are going to find out that if they go to podcrash.net, that points to a Tumblr because what, there's too many places. To, that's, that's enough. We need, we, we're on enough places. So that points to a Tumblr. Where, and if you read the Tumblr for every episode, you'll, see, you'll find all the Easter eggs on the show because there are Easter eggs. And I have one uh, final say, uh, thing to say, and that is let's get out of here. Like, I don't know if this is worth... How can you put a price on it? Do I put it on eBay or something? Or no, do I take need, it to an auction house? You need to keep talking about it some more and then put it on eBay. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I, I do. I think you'll pro- you might get 500 bucks for this. Really? The problem yeah. is you can't authenticate it, though. Yeah. I don't know what to say, except that, like, it was in a magazine. Yeah. Like, there's, like, proof that it existed. Yeah, like, you, you opened your own mail. So I mean, I opened my own life. mail. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, that's his address. That's his signature. I mean, that's... It's from... That's the old film thread. Uh-huh. Like, you remember. I remember. All that stuff. Sure. That's so old school. Uh, Royal Oaks. Oh, I need it. I need That's it after for later yeah. today. Just, just to but touch it. Do, yeah, yeah pop to know. I was expecting to, to, to see it look a lot later. crazier. If you come to that, I'll give you I mean, it. All, all caps is crazy yeah. in itself, though. So. But um, <laughs> why is he yeah. shouting at you? But yeah, later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I love caps. it, and I love the fact how he it's asks people like any chance of of getting a free to, what does he say squirming onto the sublist fest, and he was on the sublist like. Forever uh-huh. until I went to LFP. So yeah, I don't know what to do with that. What do I do with that? It's not like it's not like it's like, but it's from a writer and it's in his handwriting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like it's got to be worth something. Yeah, I, I think he's right. Talk yeah. about it for a while until people start getting really eager for it. You think no, so? Somebody, yeah, somebody might actually just approach you out of the blue and say, "I'll give you a yeah, thousand bucks." Especially since you're on the web, like somebody out there's got to have an Alan Moore collection. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, this is like very and yeah. the fact that he changed, yeah. like, oh, yeah, what's been out? Then he went to red at the end. 
And then start and, but the thing is, this, I have another one from Charles Bukowski, actually. Because oh. I did the same thing. This was, a, this was before the freaking internet, right? I'm like doing interviews through the mail with people. That's how freaking old school. How do you get an address and stuff? I called him, and he gave it to me. So I had his phone number, but not his address. So I called him at home, and I said, it's too expensive to interview you over the phone. Can I just e mail you? And he was like, sure. And he loved Film Threat, because um, I had become friends with Stephen Bissett at the time, who was illustrating Swamp Thing. That's how I got his phone number. Right on. So, um, Plus, it was one of the few things. It was one of the few... Counterculture and things in existence besides national anthem. Right, right. Yeah, actually, now when I think about it, yeah, like it is. I mean, like now there's like a million film sites and stuff, but at the time there really wasn't much of anything. Hey, have you guys so. talked about the uh, posters lately? Like, I, I wonder, do you think the Superman thread count is as good as the Spider Man thread count? <laughs> That is hilarious. You know what? what the fuck is that? When, when that you look style? at like the, that Superman thing, where it's just like, what are you going yeah, for? I this bizarre the texture. It's, it just it's seems the like same a waste thing. of yeah. processing power on why, a computer. Why does there have to be texture on every costume? Now? And why yeah, is it focused yeah. like exclusively on that? It, it, face, it, it sure makes a, it harder to cosplay. We didn't get to talk about cosplay. Oh, There's no. so much stuff oh, we talk about. You guys had a very tight thing. I mean. Um, and we did this live, which is a totally different kind of thing, and yeah. kind of winging it. It was very last minute. The fact that you guys like, just were contacted, what, two days ago? Yeah. So by thrilled. Sean? You have no idea. You were so, so what? We were thrilled. You guys, oh, no, I was excited because we couldn't find it. I was like, <laughs> I'll do a UFO podcast. I don't care. Like, But no, I just, this is so awesome. And also, like, the fact that your show is a good show. Like, Thank you. Like, Thank because, you very much. yeah, like, when you were, all that stuff about Arrow, first of all, you convinced me of two things. A, there's shit about it I'll hate, and B, I really want to see it now. Because I didn't want to see it. In fact, I've got this tweet I'm going to send out around Halloween um, that I've, I, I will write stuff. And I'm like, this is, I'm, I'm working on my arrow costume. And this, this, is, this is my arrow costume. What do you think? It's accurate to the show. Yeah, it is. It very much is. <laughs> um, it's my air, that's my arrow costume. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. What do you think? You need some more scars. I'm just, I don't know, yeah. If I add need that one all dumb I need is the scars. Bite. The bite, when you were talking about that, it's like, I looked okay, it, up. I was like, it sounds is? like an obsessive, cheesy thing to talk about. It's, that's a great thing to talk about. And you had like these great theories about it. Like, it was such are a they, great they conversation. Making, when you guys were talking about the Starling City thing, and, yeah. I bopped around do you think that that's episode, maybe just like so geeks will actually talk and, about it? Whatever. I don't know. It, it seems like weird that you're just you're just poking a bear now. Yeah. Like you, you know, know you don't, don't want to piss off the geeks. They are the internet. Yeah. You know, they shut you down. Like and everything. Where what they did. It just seems so unnecessary. Like of all the changes you could make. Like, uh, like we no talked about on the podcast, mm -hmm. calling them just awesome. arrow. I that get that. I'm not for like, it. Yeah. But and I understand your your highest downloaded but shows. Like yeah. the because city you're in that you may mention in a once every other podcast briefly. What a cool you know, you know, know, a lot of that's just a series of yeah. 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 producers. Yeah, a series of getting producers to shut the fuck up. It's like, okay, what do you want to say? Give them something so you can keep something. That's why I'm going to talk about that thing about Robin. Go full Robin. Go full Robin.